untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white aggro deck updated with Wilds of Eldraine, and according to the stats on Untapped, this is one of the best performing archetypes in the best of one standard metagame, and it's easy to see why. We've got a great curve of creatures, being aggressive is always good in best of one, and then we also have some nice disruption with cards like Thalia punishing non-creature spells, whereas we don't really have any in our deck, besides the one-off Virtue of Loyalty, which I'm trying out. Then we also have a new addition in Spellbook Vendor, which has been quite nice for the deck, a 2-2 that has Vigilance. At the beginning of combat we can pay 1 mana. If we do, create a Sorcerer Roll token attached to target creature we control. Now a creature can only have one Sorcerer Roll, so it's not like the Luminarch Aspirant that can keep putting more power and toughness onto the same creature. Also have to pay 1 mana here, but plus 1 plus 1 and getting to scry 1 whenever we attack is still quite nice, and this gives us a mana sink whenever we have some leftover mana laying around. And then we still have some of the impressive 3 mana creatures, like Adlin, that can quickly close out the game, making an army of human tokens. I'm also playing two copies of Extraction Specialist. This is a nod to the popularity of Mono Red Aggro in the meta, a 3-2 lifelink potentially getting back a Thalia after the opponent trying to take it out with a burn spell is pretty nice. And then we still have the full set of Brutal Cathar as the main removal in our deck, and having a creature that doubles up as removal is always great and best of one, since against control decks we don't have a dead removal spell in hand, we can still play the Cathar, potentially transform it into a 3-3 first strike, and that can start beating down, and then being a creature also means it doesn't get taxed by Thalia, and we can also find it with our Knight Errant of Eos. This is another huge addition for this archetype, can convoke tapping a bunch of creatures, usually want to tap at least 3 creatures, so we can find our powerful 3 mana cards, but we can also tap 5 creatures if we have a lot of them in play, and potentially find additional copies of Knight Errant that we can then chain together. And then another great mana sink is the Entrapped Adversary, can play it as a 3-1 lifelink, and for every 2 spare mana we can give the team plus 1 plus 1. And then we also have the Officer, which for 4 mana can find additional creatures, so that's also not a bad mana sink in those controlling matchups. Then Initiate gives us an answer to artifacts and enchantments, can train it as we attack with larger creatures. And then Skralv, also very nice at protecting some of our key creatures like Thalia and Adlin. And then we also have a nice Anthem effect here with a Copper Code Vanguard, giving each other human we control plus 1 plus 0 and toward 1. And of course a vendor also human, getting that one extra power. And then a Peacekeeper, a 3-3 with Vigilance, gets to take a look at the opponent's hand. Especially nice against decks that have a playset of a certain sweeper like Sunfall, make them all too more expensive in combination with Thalia, can be a nightmare for those control decks. And then as we mentioned Virtue of Loyalty, our only non-creature spell in this deck, can first use the Adventure to make a 2-2 knight at instant speed, and then later the 5 mana enchantment can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on all our creatures and untap them, so that can also be nice if there's a bit of a board stall building up. And our mana base has two copies of Mishra's Foundry, as well as an Iganjo, which can often be channeled on the cheap thanks to some of our legendary creatures. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Can start with Initiate into Thalia. Doesn't hit quite as hard, but this way we do get to train the initiate and up the beanstalk. So this could be a banned control deck, could be five color invasion of Alara build. Either way, Thalia is going to be effective. And if they find an answer, we can play another one. Okay, so Peacekeeper have a look versus I can play double one drop and then still Convoke a Knight Errant. But then we won't be attacking and training the Initiate. So kind of like Peacekeeper also informs us about a potential Sweeper that might be incoming. Alright, that is Syncopate for one. So it definitely looks like the Band's control deck. The Leyline Binding could be part of it. At 6 mana... They might have a Sunfall, but we could do some damage in the meantime with Double Officer Knight Errants. Only really need to tap three creatures to get most of the value since we can't tap five. And then Thalia can still attack, or we could send Initiate to play around Iganjo a bit better.
Alright, we're all in here. This might also get countered. And then would have loved to see another Peacekeeper to have a look. But Vanguard and Officer will have to do. No real targets for Brutal Cathar. They do have a Leyline Binding end of turn, so if they exile Thalia, they can still Sunfall us. Which is probably what's happening. Alright, maybe your opponent missing the fifth land. So now Thalia can still potentially slow down a Sunfall. Opponent passes. Alright, step one, Thalia. That resolved. I think we're going all in. Can maybe hold back the officer, but these are attacking, and then if her opponent's got nothing, they might be dead. Alright, close one here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand's unfortunate. We drew both our copies of Mishra's Foundry. With one planes, this hand probably would have been keepable. This is better. So... Can maybe ditch one of my one drops, so I can curve one, two, three. If I draw land, could also keep the one drop because it's good alongside Knight Errant and ditch Brutal Cathar, which may or may not be good in the matchup. Sure, because playing a one drop the same turn we play Knight Errant is basically free when it comes to Convoke, and then I think I lead with Officer because if the plan is Vanguard, it's not gonna help train the initiate afterwards. Opponent on mono black, and an extract of the truth probably takes vanguard now, or knight errants, which is potentially card advantage. Takes vanguard, play initiate, hit for two, and then next turn we could already convoke a knight errants, hopefully after finding another one drop. But another extract takes away knight errants, Okay, Vanguard wasn't bad. We get to train the initiates. Still have our foundry to keep up the pressure, but now something like Shield Roots is going to be an excellent blocker. Four mana. And it's just going to be a Trespasser that we can still attack into. We can also activate Officer before trading it off. Or play Adlin. And then, do I still attack? If our opponent has a cut down for Vanguard, that would be pretty rough. Yeah, I think it's probably worthwhile to try and attack. And then do I trade Officer or Initiate? Opponent likely trades for Initiates if they care to block here. No, trades for Officer to shut down the card advantage. So gotta hope that... Uh, they can't easily answer Adlin. They are down to 8 in the meantime. And Gix's command could be somewhat effective. Yep. And then, yeah, we can sacrifice Hopeful Initiate and keep Adlin. So that's not too bad. And then now Peacekeeper probably over a Foundry activation. See Liliana and Underdog. I'll name Liliana. Even though it's not too effective when we can just sack a 1-1 one, one token to it. So maybe Underdog makes more sense. Yeah, it's pretty important that we got to keep Adlin after that Gixis command. The order in which it resolves is of course pretty relevant too. Opponent plays a 4-mana underdog. And we're just gonna activate Foundry here and swing in. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand is missing a second land. So I don't think we can realistically keep. This is better. And then what to get rid of? Could be the specialist. It is a nice two for one if they kill my creature. It's good with vendor. 
So maybe then it's adversary. Since at least Knight Errant can pull us ahead. Okay, I'll uh, switch plan and go for Thalia. If they kill it, play Specialist to get it back. If not, Vendor, pay the one. And we want a Skrelv. I assume we're up against an Esper, either Legends or Control. More likely Control if they didn't play anything so far. So Skrelv is useful. But we're pretty far from convoking Knight Errant next turn. And Skrelv doesn't really help with that plan. So finding a land might be better. They do kill Thalia. But it's going to come right back. And now the two bodies make it easier to convoke the knight. And Vigilance is also nice with convoke. Okay, so a couple options. Vendor can grow any of our two creatures attack. Let's say I grow Vendor itself. Then I would have three mana left in my second main phase, and I could still Convoke Knight, but it would only be tapping two creatures. But there's a chance they don't trade here, and then we would get a nice attack in and still be able to Convoke. Don't think I'm using Brutal Cathar yet, so sure, let's go for it here. Alternative is just Convoke Knight Errant, tapping three creatures, and then have two mana left to cast whatever I find. Maybe that's still better. All right, fine. And find the initiate that I can play, and then I can still pay the one from Vendor. And what do we want to enchant? Vendor itself lets it survive cut down. Yeah, that makes sense. Want to keep initiate small so we can train it. And the 4 3 specialist still trades for Trespasser. Opponent with a quick study. And a concession. Yeah, I guess they're too far behind. Thalia taxing them makes life pretty difficult. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Skrelf to protect Thalia, and then Adlin can lay down the hammer. Turn one Swiss Spear. Okay, so against a spell heavy deck. Turn two Thalia protected by Skralv is a nice sequence. And then Adlin can overpower some of the smaller creatures. Swiss Spear attacks, I'll take it. And another Swiss Spear. So don't need to worry about any instants to pump Swiss Spears since we have a Thalia in play. And then, uh, yeah, play Adlin, attack with Thalia, but probably just eats the 1-1. One -one. But I don't want to use Skralf to protect it, since we need it back to save Adlin and Thalia. Now we still have to watch out for pump spells, trying to pump Swiss Spear to get past Adlin. The new Monstrous Rage comes to mind. Swiss Spear back on defense. Okay, so we have quite a few options. Could attack with Adlin and use Skrelv to ensure that it can go through. They still get to eat the token. And then I guess I wouldn't be able to really convoke Knight Errands to its full potential. So maybe kick things off with a Brutal Cathar. Play Officer. And then I could still use Skrelv on Adlin attack and then convoke Knight Errands. Although I guess never mind, we would have a tapped Skrelv in that scenario. So this only works if I attack with Adlin and they don't kill it. Or I can just convoke Knight Errant, have Skrelv be tapped, but then we get pretty far ahead on board and we don't run into any tricks from the opponent. Yeah, it's probably worth it. 
They can kill Brutal Cathar and get Swiss Spear back. But the damage has been done. And find another Knight Errant, and Adversary looks good. So no attacks at this turn. Nothing from the opponents. So this is their chance to kill one of my creatures, but they don't. Switches to night time. So yeah, I'm not sure what they're setting up here, but it uh, looks like a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. I think we've got a keeper. No one drop, but turn two Thalia, turn three Adelin's pretty effective. Up against moderate aggro. Okay, Thalia is pretty nice. Looks like red-white, actually. They might be playing into the celebration theme. Not sure what else the white could be for. Lots of token makers. Another epicure for now. And no attack. Alright, can play Adlin and get an attack in. Making a 1-1. Opponent could triple block with Epicures to trade for Thalia, but then our 1-1 one -one survives. That's still reasonable. Vanguard doesn't pump toughness, but I guess I could wait one turn. And then either with Vendor or Vanguard, we don't have to trade Thalia. Sure. Opponent had a reinforcements too. Alright, they're going all out here, so they probably have the Convoke card... Perhaps the uh, one mana sorcery making three goblin tokens if they destroy an artifact, as we see plenty of cheap disposable artifacts. Okay, so next up, Vanguard pumps the team. Can also play Vendor, but won't have the mana to pay for it. But we could still keep up Iganjo, thanks to our two legends for one mana. And if Adlin trades, we've got two more, so I don't really mind. That Virtue of Loyalty makes a 2-2. Still doesn't really ambush anything. Well, now the tempo advantage of channeling Iganjo is probably worthwhile. Since we get to keep Adlon in play, don't have to recast it. Saves us a lot of trouble. And then next turn, Vendor, pay the one. Virtue of Loyalty, definitely a good payoff for a tokens deck, but with Thalia costing six mana is just too much, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Officer into Vanguard, since going initiate into Vanguard doesn't let us train. Opponent blue-black, could be Esper. And uh, they're likely holding removal, could attack first and then play Vanguard. Even though we potentially miss out on one damage. So they might be tempted to kill Officer here instead. Right, they do a spell stutter, so blue black fairies means at least Brule Cathar will have some targets. A Liliana. Okay, pretty effective. Kill officer. Next turn, make his discard. Now I can name Planeswalker with Peacekeeper as well. I think we give that a shot. See, spell stutter, forager, airtie, mastermind. So Forager doesn't have any 1-mana removal spells to get back. It's not a huge concern. Spell Stutter we can sort of play around. Airtie would probably be the most annoying. And then our opponent might discard it to Liliana instead. If they play Halo Forager just as a blocker, can clear it with Brutal Cathar, finish off Liliana. So I don't think we need to name Liliana here. I would rather name Airtai. And then, if they make us discard, probably let go of an initiate. I'm tired of and then if their plan is Forager, we exile it. If they're planning to hang back with Mastermind to chump, 
then we can play a couple more creatures into the minus two. Adlin's not going to resolve, so let's start by attacking. Alright, Liliana down, that's a victory. And then now, probably go Initiates plus Adversary. And then they're probably committed to going Spell Stutter plus Mastermind. And then next turn we can try Adlin. Ooh, Shieldred. Good thing we have a Brutal Cathar. And yeah, it's only counter spells to get back with Halo Forager. So let's clear that as soon as possible. Attack and train. Alright, so if they don't find removal for Brutal Cathar, we could be okay. Just a land, so nothing to get back with Forager. And Athalia's not bad either, although I imagine Adlon's still the play. Initiate up to a 3-4. Opponent can trade for Peacekeeper. Take 4. And now Adlin can potentially attack into a Shieldred. Well, speak of the devil. Night Errant was a good draw. So, play Thalia. And then convoke Night Errant. Question is whether I tap all five creatures, or if I try to get an attack in with Adlin. Or if I just tap four creatures. Either way, we can play Thalia first. I think it's worth it to try and get an attack in. If they trade for Shieldred, that's probably not bad for me. And I'm not sending in the 1-1 one, one since I need it for Convoke, otherwise it would make sense to send that one as well. Yeah, I imagine they trade. Then if they find removal for Cathar, it's still pretty effective. So it also would have been reasonable not to go for the trade there. Find Skrelf, and then next turn Adversary to pump the team. So even if they kill Brutal Cathar, I think we'll be okay. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing a one drop, but otherwise a fine curve. Thalia and Peacekeeper give us lots of disruption. Cathar for removal. Vendor has our mana sink. Facing soldiers, so not the best matchup for Thalia. Might go for turn two Vendor. Although first strike creature can still attack pretty well. But we'll probably have a gap at 4 mana where I want to play 3 drop. So then I can spend the 1 from Vendor. Harbin is scary, but we have an answer. Problem is our opponent could have their own Brutal Cathar, so we might want to check out their hand with Peacekeeper first. And they actually fired one off now. So yeah, step one, Peacekeeper. And see Double Veteran, so that's an easy name. They can still play one for four mana. And then do I trade for Brutal Cathar? Yeah, it's probably a fine trade. Opponent's not gonna offer. Okay, so now... I could go Brutal Cathar, get back Vendor, pay the 1, grow Peacekeeper. Yeah, that's probably the move. Even though Harbin's a problem long term. Gotta try and outrace it. And scry that to the bottom. Try and find another Cathar, or potentially Knight Errant, to find more creatures. Harbin hit for 5. Alright, there's our Knight Errant. So what's the play here? If Peacekeeper attacks, opponent can just block with two veterans, and then I don't kill both, because one will shrink down back to a 2-2, two -two, but only have one damage marked on it. But they might just take it, to be fair. 
And then let's say we don't have Peacekeeper anymore. I can still convoke Knight Errant quite successfully. Question is whether I can attack with Vendor and pay the one. I think we can. And don't need Thalia. And Skrelv. It's probably going to be too late to the party here. And it's no Brutal Cathar. Odin takes it, down to 9. So yeah, what happens now if I play Knight Errant, tapping 3 creatures? Then I'll still have 2 mana left, so I could still play Thalia. Or we could play Peacekeeper to have another look. And then I can still Convoke, tapping 4 creatures. Problem is, I will only have the Knight Errant back on defense, so then removal from another Cathar would be game over. I guess just two veterans attacking would also be game over, so I can't really afford to tap my whole team. So I think at most three creatures make sense. And three is equal to four in this deck. Final Brutal Cathar. So that's certainly the pick. And then probably go for Officer here. Skrull making creature unblockable could be relevant, but I don't think it's the pick. And then either way, play Thalia. Okay. Let's see if we're dead. Cathar will do it. Mishra's Foundry is going to be a little bit short. Puts us to one. So even a Siege Veteran here, or another Valiant Veteran would be game. Beachhead is also one short. Six in the air can block the two Valiant Veterans. So from the looks of it, we're not dead on board. That's good. And the next turn with Brutal Cathar, we should be able to clear a path. Opponent animates Foundry. So as long as we block the two veterans, we should be alive. And then the veteran will die after it shrinks back down to a 2-2. Two -two. We're at 1. And reinforcements. Does that do it here? So clear a token, attack all out, opponent chumps, still takes nine. So yeah. Not sure why they play the reinforcements main phase. But I'm pretty sure this does it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Very close one here against blue white soldiers as we get to level up to diamond two. So yeah, this Mono White deck seems pretty powerful in the best of one meta right now. The Mono Red matchup seems quite good with cards like Thalia. We've got the uh, Specialist as a lifelinker getting back a 2-drop. And then just enough cheap cards to keep up with the aggressive red decks. And eventually we can overpower them with a Knight Errant. Against Control we've got Thalia and Peacekeeper to disrupt the hand. While being able to apply lots of pressure. So the deck is quite balanced. I think the Spellbook Vendor has been a great addition for the deck as well. Giving us another mana sink whenever we've got some leftover mana is very helpful. And uh, did not get to see the Virtue of Loyalty in action. But that card has been quite impressive out of other decks. So I think it's okay as a one-off here. But you could also go with without it and instead maybe play it in a tokens build that's more dedicated to the theme. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.